Hello boys and girls, it is Bible time. So we're gonna start off with prayer and then I'm going to read you a story about Peter and John, two of Jesus' disciples and something awesome that happened after Jesus went up to heaven. All right, so let's start off with prayer, then we'll talk about it a little bit more. Hands in the air, hands in our hair, hands ready for prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you again, Jesus, for all that you've done for us and thank you that we had just celebrated your sacrifice on the cross and how you raised from the dead. And I pray that we will remember that today and tell others about you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so this story is called A Miracle and a Message. So we're going to see a miracle in the story, which is very cool. Um, but this happened a little bit after Jesus ascended into heaven. Remember, he was on earth um, with his disciples and then he kind of just rose up into the sky and disappeared behind the clouds. And Jesus gave the disciples the Holy Spirit. So they would have someone who would help them uh, with their walk with God and with other awesome things that we're going to read about. Okay, so Jesus is up in heaven again, and Peter and John are on earth telling others about him. All right, let's start. Peter and John were on their way to the temple. They went to the temple every day to be with other believers. So just like we have church where we gather with other believers, they had the temple. Jesus had gone back to heaven and had sent the Holy Spirit who gave the disciples power to live for Christ. Peter, John, and the other apostles were going around Jerusalem telling the news that God raised Jesus from the dead. More people were trusting in Christ every day. Every single day, new people were following Jesus. Now near the gate of the temple, they met a lame man whose friends carried him to the temple every day. Now lame in this case means that his legs don't work. He can't walk. That's why his friends had to carry him to the temple because he couldn't walk there on his own. When the crippled man saw Peter and John, he asked them for money. All right, so this man, since he couldn't walk, he probably didn't have a job because he couldn't walk. He couldn't walk around and do a job. So he had to go by the temple and ask people for money. Instead of being able to earn his own money, he had to ask others for money. So that's what he's doing right now for to Peter and John as well. Peter told him that he didn't have any silver or gold, but he would give him what he did have. I wonder what Peter has. Let's find out. Then Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He just told this man who can't walk to rise up and walk. Jesus did that a few times. But he didn't say, Peter didn't say, oh, by my power, Peter, by Peter's power, stand up and walk. No, because Peter couldn't do that. But he said, by Jesus' power, stand up and walk. And what do you think happened? Let's find out. Peter took the man's right hand and lifted him up. At that moment, the lame man's feet and ankles became strong and healthy. He was healed. The man jumped up and down. How excited he must have been. He walked into the temple with Peter and John, jumping and praising God. Can you imagine if you weren't able to walk and then all of a sudden you're healed? You would be jumping around, dancing. It'd be very exciting. The people could hardly believe what they had seen. A miracle had happened right before their eyes. They gathered around Peter and John, staring in amazement. But Peter immediately turned the people's attention to the Lord and told them that the man who had been healed uh, was healed by the power of God, not by human power. So Peter didn't take credit. He didn't say, oh yes, I healed him. I'm very strong. I know, I know. No, no, no. He gave the glory to God because God was the one who healed the man not Peter. Peter reminded them that they had killed Jesus, but God raised him from the dead. Jesus Christ had died for their sins and risen from the dead. He begged the Jewish people to repent and trust Christ to forgive their sins. The Sadducees, can you say Sadducees? Those were a type of uh, religious leaders. The Sadducees and other Jewish religious leaders did not like what Peter and John were teaching about Jesus' resurrection. They didn't believe in the resurrection. A lot of the Jewish religious leaders, and like the Sadducees or the Pharisees, they didn't believe in Jesus' resurrection. They took Peter and John and they put them in prison. 
But many people who had heard Peter and John's message about Jesus trusted in Christ. There were now about 5,000 men in Jerusalem who were followers of Christ. So there had only been a few before, but now there was 5,000 because Peter and John and the other disciples were telling others about Jesus because they saw the amazing things Jesus did. So they went and told others and other people started to believe. In the morning, Peter and John were taken before the leaders to talk about the miracle. So they were thrown in prison, but then the next morning they were brought to the leaders to talk about what happened. Peter and John said that the lame man had been healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the one on whom all salvation depends, but you rejected him, Peter told them. However, God raised him from the dead. Peter continued, and it is only by the name of Jesus that you can be saved from the punishment of your sin. So Peter is telling them the truth. He's telling them the gospel. The leaders told Peter and John that they would let them go, but they must not teach about Jesus anymore. Oh, I bet Peter and John want to get out of jail, but would they be able to not teach about Jesus anymore? Let's see what they say. Peter and John told them that they had to obey God and speak the truth. After more threats, the leaders let Peter and John go. So even though they said, we're going to still have to tell the truth, which is that Jesus rose from the dead, the people, the leaders still let them go after saying, you know, telling them like, you can't, don't do this or this will happen. But they did let them go. Peter and John went back to the other believers and told them what had happened. The whole group of Jesus' followers prayed, asking the Lord to help them be bold in speaking about Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. God answered their prayer by giving them the power to speak boldly. Boys and girls, when you're bold, that means that you, um, you might be scared a little bit still. It's okay to be scared. That doesn't mean you're not bold. But it means that you are saying the truth. You're preaching the truth even if people might make fun of you for it, or even if people aren't going to treat you nicely because of it. So we should also be bold in telling others about Jesus. Now, there are a couple questions that I've come up with. So why would it have been wrong for Peter and John to obey the religious leaders and stop speaking of Jesus? Why do you think that would have been wrong? Well, Remember, Jesus had commanded them to preach the gospel. He commanded them before he went up to heaven to tell others about him. And they had to obey his orders more than the orders of man. Right? That makes sense, right? A couple more questions. When a Christian is bold, so when a Christian is speaking God's truth no matter what, what might he tell others about Jesus? What kind of things can you tell people about Jesus? I'm going to give you a couple examples, but I also want you to think of some other things you might want to tell people about Jesus. Well, you can tell when you're being, when you're bold and being a, a bold Christian, you can tell others that Jesus died for their sins and that Jesus will forgive them if they trust in him for salvation, right? You might also tell them that Jesus loves us and that's why he died for our sins because he loves us so much. One last question. How would you prepare to explain the gospel to somebody? So what could you do today or tomorrow or sometime this week to prepare for telling someone about the gospel? Now, I have a couple examples that you can do right at home. But I want you to even think about it and think about, hmm, you know, what else can I do to prepare or be ready to tell people about the good news of Jesus? I mean, one thing you can do is pray and say, God, please Give me the right words to say. Please make me bold so that I will not be scared to tell others about you and that I will say the right thing. So prayer is always good. And then reading your Bible. You got to know the gospel. You've got to know God's word in order to tell others about it. So making sure you spend time in God's word. We do that here at Bible time, but you can also do it at home. Uh, some churches are doing online things, so if you're able to watch online with your church, that's another way to learn about the Bible, or with your parents. Doing those two things would be, will be very helpful in preparing us to tell others about Jesus. Um, so those are the two examples I'm going to give you, but 
there are more ways. So I want to see if you think of any of them. All right. If you think of some, tell your parents and see if there's a way for you to start doing that now. Start preparing to tell others about Jesus now. All right, boys and girls, that is the end of our story and our questions. But now I just want to pray again and ask God to give us boldness, especially in this time when things in the world are a little bit crazy and people are asking more questions about God. We want to be able to tell them about him. So let's be bold and let's be prepared. All right, so we're going to pray for that real quick. Hands in the air, hands in our hair, hands ready for prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, help us to be bold and help us to talk about you and to tell others about you. Uh, give us peace and um, love for them and make it stronger than our fears so that we will be uh, happy and glad to tell others about you. And I pray, Lord, that when the time comes that you give us the right words to say. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that Bible lesson and I hope you think about, hmm, how can I prepare to tell others about Jesus? All right, I'll see you later.